congratulations, you're eight and three. But just look at that, Lamar Jackson, 165 passing yards, one touchdown, four interceptions, and they still win. Baltimore just feels like that team that's gonna find a way to get wins even when they don't have their best fastball. And that's important. Meanwhile, Cleveland, trouble scoring points in this one, trouble running the football. You see Nick Chubb, eight for 16, Kareem Hunt, seven for 20. So Chubb and Kareem Hunt, 15 totes, 36 yards. That dog won't hunt. Ravens get a division win, and they move to eight and three. All right, so what do we say about Baltimore tonight? I mean, you can go glass half full, glass half empty. I mean, you found a way to win when you have your best stuff, right? That's what every pitcher wants to do. I don't have a good fastball, but I still found a way to get through, you know, seven and two-thirds, two runs, and got a win. Or do you say, how many more times can they do this? Like, you can't live constantly giving teams chances to beat you and playing poorly. You made what of Baltimore tonight, Emery? Football's kid, Icarus. They're flying too close to the sun right now. At some point, that wax is going to fall off, and they're going to fall out the sky and hit the ground. So Look at that. That's, that's awesome what, stuff. That's that is mythology. That is a mythology parable to start us off. University of Louisiana education, man. Go that's ahead, have it. And wow. so that's what they have to do. They have to find a way to play consistent. Otherwise, a team will beat them, and if this continues to happen, that team will be in the playoffs. I, I agree with you. It's almost though that we forget that they're missing so many starters due to uh, injury that's going to keep them out for the entire year. They had so much attrition on the defensive side. Uh, obviously, they lost their top two running backs. They've pe they're piecing it together. This is what piecing it together looks like. A number of teams are trying to piece it together, and they're going and they're a whole lot closer to the Detroit Lions than they are the Baltimore Ravens in the win loss column. The, the Ravens are getting it done in ugly ways. So what? They don't care. They got blown out by the Cincinnati Bengals a couple of weeks ago, but they are beating playoff teams from last year, teams that will be making the playoffs this year, teams that are hoping to make the playoffs, but ultimately will not make the playoffs because they lost to the Baltimore Ravens. And I think that the Cleveland Browns, this was going to be their last gasp of air here. And you know, we saw which way that went. I'll get to Cleveland in a minute, but uh, following up on that, I sort of lean more towards the Pollyannish view here, which is, I'll fix it eventually, or I'll at least try, and, and in the meantime, I'm winning, right? It's hard to win football games in the NFL, and they are doing it, and they are 8-3, and three, and you don't have to give that back. Uh, now, Lamar Jackson, there was a lot of people saying, well, he can't beat you with his arm. And then there's a lot of people really sure saying, well, he proved he can beat you with his arm. Well, I think he can beat you with his arm sometimes. Now, nobody does it every time, right? It's about can you do it consistently and enough? Can Lamar Jackson beat you consistently and enough with his arm, or do we still not know, J.J.? We still don't know. It, 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 he has not pieced it all together outside of his MVP year. That's a huge caveat. Well, outside of that one year where he was the unanimous, unanimous best MVP. player in the NBA. And a half okay. against the Colts this year where in the second half he threw the ball beautifully and brilliantly for, for a full 30 minutes and into overtime and basically did it himself. I'll give him that one too. Right, and, and go back to about week six of the NFL season when the Ravens were 5-1 and one and a lot of people had him on the short list of MVP, at least in the top three or four alongside Kyler Murray and Tom Brady. And then he sort of fell off as the attrition took hold of the Baltimore Ravens tonight. He did not look good whatsoever, and he made uh, mistake after mistake, certainly in the first half. His defense kept him in the football game, but it was also his legs that kept the Ravens offense in the game. When you look at the final stats, Lamar Jackson led the team in rushing, obviously he led the team in passing, but he led the team in rushing with 17 attempts for 68 yards. You know, it, it's not D Devontae Freeman. It's not um, Latavius Murray. You can put them together and they still didn't equal what Lamar Jackson did on the ground. So he is keeping this team afloat. And fortunately enough for him and the Ravens, they didn't go as he went because anytime that you throw four interceptions in a game, that usually means that your team is going to lose. And, and that's the exact point why you want to have a dual threat because let's say that one threat, the passing isn't working. He kept him in the ball game with his legs. That's six first downs when we talk about 68 yards, and that's what ultimately got them to win. All right, very strange in the schedule. I've, I don't think I've ever seen this. Cleveland played Baltimore. They have a bye, and then they play Baltimore again. Hmm. They play them back-to-back -back games, and not like last game of the regular season that we play in the playoffs. We've seen that before. Literally, in the regular season, you play the same opponent in consecutive games. Who does that help here? Is that edge Cleveland or edge Baltimore or edge neither? Take the, the turnovers out of it. And I know we can't do that because they were actual things on the field. But maybe that's why we saw the type of game that we saw today from Baltimore. 
in, in Cleveland, keeping things close to the vest because they're going to play each other after that bye week. So I think that's why this game was a bit sloppy outside of the four turnovers. Neither team showed much tonight. No, they didn't. And Baltimore has Pittsburgh in between those two Cleveland games. Cleveland at least gets the bye, and it's a late bye, right? So now they've played a number of games, now 11 games. They finally get to the bye. They're able to get a little bit healthier, hopefully, but that's also going to help them get their ground game uh, off of the ground, if you will. Kareem Hunt tonight, seven carries, 20 yards. Nick Chubb, eight carries, 16 yards. I mean, you got to think that after a bye, getting Nick Chubb a little bit healthier, getting Kareem Hunt, who just came back, getting him healthier, allowing Baker Mayfield to rest all of his ailments. They come off that bye. They should be able to run the football better. Baker Mayfield should be able to throw the football more effectively. And Emory, I think that's a fantastic point. Both teams, yeah, okay, I, I, we want to win this game, but we don't want to show you everything right now. Yeah, but you got to win this game if you're Cleveland because now you're 500. And then and so to flush out what you, the points that you were just making, is Cleveland fixable this year, right? They're banged up. And we've seen Baltimore, you know, some teams, some programs in all different sports have been able to rebuild on the fly. You know, New England's trying to rebuild on the fly, and they're doing it very well this year. Baltimore's trying to sort of reconfigure, not really because of all the injuries they've had, on the fly, and it's working. Can Cleveland reconfigure on the fly with all their injuries? They may have lost Jack Conklin for a while tonight. Mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield's clearly not 100%. They've been without Kareem Hunt, who's come back, and, and you know maybe he was a little rusty. Uh, Nick Chubb, he's a guy that has missed time at certain points. They've had injuries to wide receivers. Is Cleveland fixable on the fly, Jonathan? If, flick, if fixable means are they going to make it to the playoffs, it's going yes. to be extremely difficult. And I'd have to say no. To give you a straight answer, I'm going to say no. Because uh, after the Baltimore game, they have the Vegas Raiders, the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau. That's going to be a loss. They have Pittsburgh. Then they have Cincinnati. There are 12 teams currently in the AFC that are 500 or better right now. There's only 16 teams in the entire AFC, and 12 of them are at even right now or better. And so you can look at the in the hunt and say, well, you know, they're on there and they're on the graphic. But the fact is they're going to have to win more games than they lose finishing out here. And I don't know that they're going to do that against a number of AFC North opponents, including, of course, the team they just lost. You think to. three and two will get them in? It, I mean, without looking at the at who, nine and eight. who they, nine and eight. I, th I think you're going to have to get 10 yeah, wins. Yeah, I think so too. That's it. I think they're going to go nine and eight. I mean, you have Baltimore, Vegas, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore's in your building. These teams can kind of split sometimes. You just feel like off the bye, maybe they'll come out fired up. But they got to go at Green Bay and then end up with Cincy. I got to figure that's a three and two slate. And this will be a season where Cleveland, if they go nine and eight and don't make the playoffs, that's going to be very disappointing. Do you feel like Cleveland is fixable on the fly here? They are fixable because of what we talked about earlier, talent. And I think when you look at their defense, Clowney, Garrett, talent, they can rush the pass, they can stop the run. But also because they're got, they've gotten healthier in the backfield. You get Nick Chubb uh, to run like he's run. Now that you have a healthier Kareem Hunt, that should take some of the pressure. And if they can run the football, even without Jack Conklin for an extended period of time, I think they'll be just fine. They should be eyeing that seventh spot. That's the Chargers right now, and we know the Chargers have some leakage on, yeah. on their defense. I think it's a, a you know, eight teams vying for that one spot right now in the AFC. All right. Well, let's look at the number one spot. To quote my guy, <laughs> uh, and and only the number one spot gets the buy. So. Who's right now in the best stead in your mind to be the number one seed in the AFC? I mean, if you look at it, New England has eight wins. Um, Baltimore has eight wins. Baltimore right. currently leading. Mm -hmm. Because they're right. And they because the other two teams are gonna have their bye. Titans have eight wins. Chiefs are coming on. I mean, the, the hottest team. Bills could go. Bills could. I mean, if either the Bills or the Patriots sweep the other one, they could be in very good shape to run the table. Who, who's who's your best bet to be the one seed? Is it Baltimore or do you believe they've won too many games this way and they can't do this a number of times with when Lamar Jackson not playing his best ball and they're beat up? They, they can't do that throughout December and into January. The team is that's going to be the number one seed is the team that's currently in the fourth seed. It's the team that's won the oh, AFC oh, oh, each oh, of the past oh, two oh, years. Oh, oh, it's yes. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, they're playing the real. of the Chiefs. Who do you guys have one seed? Oh, I, I'm going to go. Baltimore. I'm going to go with Baltimore. I do see Baltimore holding tight. They've been able to do well with this roster as it is. We're going to see them get a little bit better uh, on the back end of their defense. That's when they're going to start to turn the ball over. Um, 
But right now, I, it's hard to ignore what JG just <laughs> said because Kansas City's defense is looking. All they really have to good. do is be average. Exactly. They don't have to be top and, ten. And, just be the 18th best defense in the NFL, right? And that's what they're playing like. And they turned the ball over. So, but Darius um, Need is creeping up into that defensive player of the year category. Yeah. I like How many wins will you have when you're the one seed? Twelve. Yeah, 12 in a 17 game. Yeah. 12 and 5. Yep. I, see, I think it's going to be a 12 and 5 tiebreak. I think you're going to have more than one team get to 12. I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at Buffalo, they may get to 12. Now, they do have a couple of tough games. They got to play New England twice, but they, one time they get them at home. I think they got to play Tampa. I think those beating, beating each other up right there is so going to split, allow Kansas City to elevate. Yep, and here come the Chiefs, who maybe if they could run the table, they could end up 13 and 4. You never know. And then for a while, well, we thought maybe Kansas City would be in trouble. And now, we're thinking they have a shot to be the number one seed. Again, this year it's different. Seven teams make the playoffs. And it's not like it's been where the top two seeds get the bye. Only the one seed gets the bye. So everybody else has got to put something in the middle on that first weekend of the playoffs. All right, Ravens, get it done. 16-10 to 10 over the Browns. Browns dropped 6-6. Six and six. Uh, You could just see it. Both teams beat up. It was a sloppy game that looked like there were a lot of guys who weren't expected or the guys that you thought would play first string meaningful minutes this time of year when we got ready in the preseason. But backups have to play next man up league and Baltimore finds a way through. Under comes in. Ravens covered the spread. They also went on the money line. That's it. Congratulations, Charm City. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.